Welcome to another edition of Vintage Drum Restoration Garage. And today we have uh, our buddy Troy here. And he's going to tell us about this little set that he wants to clean up or restore. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I wouldn't have this set if it actually weren't for uh, Bruce. Uh, kind of badgered me into going over to Boogie Music and uh, this thing was up on the shelf. And I was always kind of hesitant about playing vintage out on stage and, you know, thinking, ah, I want to keep it nice, keep it collectible, but um, took them out and put them under mics the other night at uh, the Valley Bar, and uh, this thing really turned some heads. So we got some hoop work to do. we got to tighten up some grommets. We're going to buff out the finish, and we're going to check the, uh, the baseball bat tone controls to make sure all the washers and everything are in order. And... Uh, we're going to address this uh, front, this batter hoop here. We've got a little bit of an issue down here to address. We're going to... Um, yeah, but basically you were uh, holding these in your, as it were, museum. And I said, well, what are you doing? You know, take these out and use them. Well, you were saying something like, uh, well, you know, I don't, I don't want them to get them screwed up. I said, well, don't you have bags to use? You said, oh, yeah, I have bags. I said, well, what's going what's gonna to go wrong? These drums are to be used. These aren't museum pieces, although we're, we're here uh, preserving these drums. In my view, I use my old stuff. And so um, just take care of it and use it and well, not abuse it. One thing's for sure, you cannot get this tone you can't get these sounds out of any type of a modern kit that I've ever played. Right, and you don't want the modern sound. You want the the vintage sound. And I, that's what I like. I like the vintage sound. Now, there's guys out there on vintage, uh, in the vintage world, who take pride in uh, recutting the edges on these drums, which I totally disagree with. Um, if you want a modern sound out of an old drum, you know, I guess... Just take some old shells and do that, I guess. But it just seems like these drums were already meant to sound the way they were with their original cuts, and they sound great the way they are. They have a growl you can't really get out of uh, any of the other stuff. And, you know, um, I do. I, I think we all have our drummers that we sort of pay attention to, right? Yeah. Uh, a guy by the name of Carter McLean has a, a red sparkle kit, also a gold sparkle uh, club date, and uh, really like the tone on those videos. And then yeah. I saw an interview with Steve Jordan where he was playing one of these. And, uh, you know, after I found this thing at Boogie Music, I just had to have it. Yeah. And uh, eventually found an eight-lug snare that matches. I didn't bring that one with me. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a jazz festival, right? Correct. That's an eight-lug. Sorry for the little interruption there. Uh, Troy was trying to make a point about uh, um, something. Yeah, I don't remember what I was saying. Okay, well, you were saying something about... Um, Steve Jordan. I, Steve and, Jordan and, you know, Carter McLean. And, um, you know, I love I love the tone out of these things. And um, the, you, those videos are out there if you do a little bit of research. But um, they're, what I've noticed on these drums is they're very for, they're very forgiving. Um, I mean, he's got them wide open, see? He's got them wide open. Look, and if you want to change the tone. Yeah, he's just using one key. And, uh, and again, you'll, you'll, see this, you'll see this demonstrated in the videos I'm talking about. Um, I was just amazed that you can dump one of the lugs, basically just back one of the lugs totally out, and you can go from bop all the way down to, you know, that deep, wet, fat rock sound. Yeah. And uh, they're just so versatile, and uh, it's, like I said, it's, it's just a shame that they don't make uh, anything like this in the modern day that's even close to this. And a lot of guys don't know this. You know, I didn't really even know it, but you'd think this is a standard rail mount, and it is. Except that Ludwig made two sizes on the banana. Uh, this drum, when when Troy got it, did not have the banana on it, the rail uh, console on it. And I happened to have one, and we were sizing it up, and we found that it was too long for this drum. And I, I thought, well, they must make two different sizes. So I went ahead and actually cut this rail off because it wasn't uh, a museum piece. It's it's nice and everything. And I re-drilled the hole and that way you could bring the uh, in to, bring it into where the holes lined up. Obviously you don't want to drill holes in the shell and make things different. So it works out good. 
and he's digging the rail consulate. Another thing that I always preach in my church is to use rail consulates. I love them. Um, anyway, we're going to, Troy's going to take these apart. And we're going to start with uh, uh, buffing the shells out, and maybe tightening these badges up a little bit because they're spinning. And, um, yeah, they're spinning a little bit. Mm. We'll tighten them up a little bit. Yeah, they, they, they do rattle a little bit, you know, but um, hey. Okay, so uh, we'll, bring you, older than me. we'll bring you back when, uh, when we've got some progress. Sorry for the little interruption there. Uh, Troy was trying to make a point about... Uh, um, something. Yeah, I don't remember what I was saying. Okay, well, you were saying something about um, Steve just, Jordan. Steve and Jordan, and, and you know Carter McLean, and, and um, you know I love I love the tone out of these things, and um, the, you, those videos are out there if you do a little bit of research. But um, they're, what I've noticed on these drums is they're very for, they're very forgiving. Um, I mean, he's got them wide open. See, he's got them wide open. Look, and if you want to change the tone, yeah, he's just using one key. And, uh, and again, you'll you'll see this you'll see this demonstrated in the videos I'm talking about. Um, I was just amazed that you can dump one of the lugs, basically just back one of the lugs totally out, and you can go from bop all the way down to you know that deep, wet, fat rock sound. Yeah. And uh, they're just so versatile, and uh, it's like I said, it's just a shame that they don't make uh, anything like this in the modern day that's even close to this. And a lot of guys don't know this. You know, I didn't really even know it, but. You'd think this is a standard rail mount, and it is, except that Ludwig made two sizes on the banana. Uh, this drum, when, when Troy got it, did not have the banana on it, the rail uh, consulate on it. And I happened to have one, and we were sizing it up, and we found that it was too long for this drum. And I, I thought, well, they must make two different sizes, so... I went ahead and actually cut this rail off because it wasn't uh, a museum piece. It's it's nice and everything. And I re-drilled the hole, and that way you could bring the uh, in to, bring it into where the holes lined up. Obviously, you don't want to drill holes in the shell and make things different. So it works out good. And he's digging the rail consulate. Another thing that I always preach in my church is to use rail consulates. I love them. Um, anyway, we're going to, Troy's going to take these apart and we're going to start with uh, uh, buffing the shells out and maybe tightening these badges up a little bit because they're spinning and um, yeah, they're spinning a little bit. Mm. We'll tighten them up a little bit. Yeah, they, they, they do rattle a little bit, you know, but um, hey. Okay, so uh, we'll bring you. Sets older than me. We'll bring you back when uh, when we've got some progress. Oh, by the way, on my last video, I uh, I showed this guitar on um, and told you where I got the guitar and um, what I was going to do to it. Now all the buttons were missing on the tuners, the original tuners, and I ordered uh, these tuners out of New York. I think it's called Bernunzio Music. I think that's what it is. Bernunzio. Really nice people down there. They have these cream colored uh, buttons to put on here. And there's a, there's a guy on YouTube that shows exactly how to install those. All you do is you put these buttons in boiling water for a few minutes and get them softer and then you um, use your heat gun on the ends of these tuners and get them hot a little bit and you press them on there and you know they're perfect they look great and so this guitar turned out really nice of course it's got some scratches and everything but it's just really beautiful and um, early 50s LG1 I think I said LGO in the last video it's an LG1 Gibson that um, actually sounds pretty good. It might need setting up, but I, I won't do that because I'm not a guitar tech. So that's the update. Oh, by the way, on my last video, I uh, I showed this guitar on um, and told you where I got the guitar and um, 
what I was going to do to it. Now all the buttons were missing on the tuners, the original tuners. And I ordered uh, these tuners out of New York. I think it's called Bernunzio Music. I think that's what it is. Bernunzio. Really nice people down there. They had these cream colored uh, buttons to put on here. And there's a, there's a guy on YouTube that shows exactly how to install those. All you do is you put these buttons in boiling water for a few minutes and get them softer and then you um, use your heat gun on the ends of these tuners and get them hot a little bit and you press them on there and you know they're perfect they look great and so this guitar turned out really nice of course it's got some scratches and everything but it's just really beautiful and um, early 50s LG1, I think I said LGO in the last video. It's an LG1 Gibson that um, actually sounds pretty good. It might need setting up, but I won't do that because I'm not a guitar tech. So that's the update. Okay, so we had some um, separation on the inlay. And uh, I stapled these. I have this little stapling gun I've showed in other videos that shoots very small staples. And uh, if you get the air just right, it won't go through the material and holds it down really nicely. And so I think that's going to work pretty good on that. The claw will cover that up. Um, okay, so we had some um, separation on the inlay. And uh, I stapled these. I have this little stapling gun I've showed in other videos that shoots very small staples. And uh, if you get the air just right, it won't go through the material and holds it down really nicely. And so I think that's going to work pretty good on that. The claw will cover that up. Um, okay, so we're going to... These badges are a little bit loose on a couple of these drums, so what I've done is I've put a piece of tape on the badge to keep hold it straight, so while we're tightening it, it will uh, remain where we want it. I've got a ball-peen hammer in my vise. I'm going to have Troy hold the shell, um, center that in that grommet where you want it, not nowhere else. <laughs> got it so that's setting right there on my ball peen hammer and uh, well it's on there okay hopefully you guys can see what's going on I don't have a very good stand here so sorry what is that old symbol stand yeah piece of crap so I'm just gonna put another ball peen hammer on here and lightly tap on it we're going to see if that tightens it up. Let's see what we got. You almost have to take the tape off to check. You got to huh? tape it, yeah, and tape it, yeah. Uh, oh, it's still moving? Well, I mean... It's, no, it's it's still moving. We need to do it some more. Do, do, do it some more? Yeah. All right, let me put the tape back on. You don't want it moving. Okay. I'll flip it and put it back up here. All right, we're in. Okay, I think we're probably pretty good. Oh, I'll do it. No movement. Oh, good. Okay. Success. Okay, so we're going to... These badges are a little bit loose on a couple of these drums, so what I've done is I've put a piece of tape on the badge to keep hold it straight, so while we're tightening it, it 
will uh, remain where we want it. I've got a ball peen hammer in my vise. I'm going to have Troy hold the shell um, center that in that grommet where you want it, and not nowhere else. <laughs> You got it? So that's setting right there on my ball peen hammer. And, uh, well, it's on there. Okay, hopefully you guys can see what's going on. I don't have a very good stand here, so. Sorry. What is that, old symbol stand? Yeah. Piece of crap. So I'm just going to put another ball peen hammer on here and lightly tap on it. And we're going to see if that tightens it up. Let's see what we got. You almost have to take the tape off to check, I gotta huh? tape it, yeah, and tape it, yeah. Uh... Oh, it's still moving? Well, I mean... It's, no, it's it's still moving. We need to do it some more. Do it, do it some more? Yeah. All right, let me put the tape back on. You don't want it moving. Okay. I'll flip it and put it back up here. All right, we're in. Okay, I think we're probably pretty good. Oh, I'll do it. No movement. Oh, good. Okay. Success. So I put this tape over this badge, and I've cut around it carefully, and we're going to have Troy do the next one. And what I do is, yeah, he's running his fingernail around the edge to get it right up against the edge of the badge so he knows where to cut. I use a screwdriver to get it really flat, but you could use that screwdriver and get all that in there. And it'll show you a real good... Uh, what you don't want to do is you only want to tack it to the badge, not the outside, so, it, so it'll move. Oh, okay. Well, you know. basically just don't do what I just did. Well, you, you can still do what you're doing, but it, sometimes it helps if you're... Um, if it can move a little bit. All right, I'm ready to cut. All right. We'll put the pressure on Troy here. <laughs> and you want to cut in towards the badge. That way you're not making marks in the, in the uh, finish, of course. What we're trying to do is we're trying to protect the patina on the badges. Um, that way when we're buffing, when you take the tape off there, it looks like they've never been buffed. These hoops are going to take a little bit longer. I'll probably send those home with Troy so he can sand the hell out of them. They're not really that, they're not terrible. How's that coming off, okay? Yeah. Yeah, the ones that were on that blue sparkle 22, 13, 16 set that I did a few months back um, were a much, much worse. Oh, by the way, guys, I, I have sold that that Blue Sparkle Classic set. A guy got a hold of me, and uh, he, saw, he saw the restoration on the channel, and um, I was ready to be done with them anyway. And so uh, we came up with a price that was fair to both of us, and I packed them up, and they went to uh, 
I believe it was Massachusetts or Rhode Island. And he got them and he loved them. He's loving them. So, and plus I made a friend, really cool dude, and um, I'm sure we'll be talking in the future. Well, look, I wouldn't even be standing here if it weren't for that, that uh, Sabian symbol you have for sale or whatever, the, whatever it oh, was. Oh, right, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I know that Sabian was just your cup of tea. That was probably, uh, probably surpassed your favorite with uh, any of the old K stuff you had. And you were just so excited to have that thing. Uh, I'm being flip, by the way. Right. Well, it was a thin symbol. It, it, it sort of had some sound, but it just wasn't. It wasn't uh, really there. You know? But it was. It, it would be for something for somebody. Ended Luckily, up. Not all our tastes are the same. You know, I've found truth, truthfully, Troy, that my old K's are uh, exactly the sound I want. I just love them. I mean, I, I don't even look for symbols anymore because. You spend a lot of money and then you want to love them, you get them home, you want to love them so much and then there's something missing out of the sound. Just, you know, searching for the perfect symbols, like, it's like finding the perfect woman. Uh, it just doesn't probably exist. <laughs> well, then you've got... Um, well, it, exi well, it exists for the first few weeks anyway. You've got like, <laughs> uh, do what's dude over at Reverie and some of these uh, symbol modifiers and everything. I mean, you can tune them and adjust them to an extent, but... You know, I guess that's the point where you have to ask yourself how much are you in love with the symbol? Yeah. How much do you really want to spend on it? And then, I mean, you know, if you got a symbol you spent big money on it and you don't really like it, I mean, at the, I guess at that point you got nothing to lose, but you could ruin it. That's right. So, um, overall, I think we're, uh, we're all badgy covered up here. All I need is a spanner and a, a 9 sixteenths. Okay. Or I'll a 5 that. So I put this tape over this badge and I've cut around it carefully and we're gonna have Troy do the next one and what I do is yeah he's running his fingernail around the edge to get it right up against the edge of the badge so he knows where to cut I use a screwdriver to get it really flat but you could use that screwdriver and get all that in there and it'll show you a real good uh, what you don't want to do is you only want to tack it to the badge, not the outside, so, it, so it'll move. Oh, okay. Well, you know. basically just don't do what I just did. Well, you, you can still do what you're doing, but it, sometimes it helps if you're, um, if it can move a little bit. All right, I'm ready to cut. All right. We'll put the pressure on Troy here. <laughs> and you want to cut in towards the badge. That way you're not making marks in the in the uh, finish, of course. What we're trying to do is we're trying to protect the patina on the badges. Um, that way when we're buffing, when you take the tape off there, it looks like they've never been buffed. These hoops are going to take a little bit longer. I'll probably send those home with Troy so he can sand the hell out of them. They're not really that, they're not terrible. How's that coming off, okay? Yeah. Yeah, the ones that were on that blue sparkle 22, 13, 16 set that I did a few months back um, were a much, much worse. Oh, by the way, guys, I, I have sold that that blue sparkle classic set. A guy got a hold of me, and uh, he saw he saw the restoration on the channel, and um, I was ready to be done with them anyway and so uh, we came up with a price that was fair to both of us and I packed them up and they went to uh, 
I believe it was Massachusetts or Rhode Island. And he got him, and he loved him. He's loving him. So, and plus I made a friend, really cool dude, and um, I'm sure we'll be talking in the future. Well, look, I wouldn't even be standing here if it weren't for that that uh, Sabian symbol you had for sale or whatever the whatever it oh, was. All right, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I know that Sabian was just your cup of tea. That was probably uh, probably surpassed your favorite with uh, any of the old K stuff you had, and you were just so excited to have that thing. Uh, I'm being flip by the way right well it was a thin symbol it, it, it sort of had some sound but it just wasn't it wasn't uh, really there you know but it was it, it would be for something for somebody ended Luckily, up yeah. not all our tastes are the same you know i've found truth truthfully troy that my old k's are uh, exactly the sound i want i just love them i mean i, I don't even look for symbols anymore because you spend a lot of money and then you want to love them, you get them home, you want to love them so much and then there's something missing out of the sound. You're just, you know, searching for the perfect symbols, like, it's like finding the perfect woman. Uh, it just doesn't probably exist. <laughs> well, then you've got... Um, well, it, exi well, it exists for the first few weeks anyway. Well, you've got like, uh, <laughs> do what's dude over at Reverie and some of these uh, symbol modifiers and everything. I mean, you can tune them and adjust them to an extent, but... You know, I guess that's the point where you have to ask yourself, how much are you in love with the symbol? Yeah. How much do you really want to spend on it? And then, I mean, you know, if you got a symbol you spent big money on it and you don't really like it, I mean, at the, I guess at that point you got nothing to lose, but you could ruin it. That's right. So, um, overall, I think we're, uh, we're all badgy covered up here. All I need is a spanner and a, a 9 sixteenths. Okay. Or a 5 that. Okay. Okay, so we've buffed all three of these shells out. By the way, these are this is a 2012-14 club date set from uh, 65. probably 65. There you go, 1965. I was uh, eight years old in 65. Let's see. Yeah, about eight years old or nine, maybe. Anyway, um, this is the first buff, the cutting buff clean all the garbage off and get some of the surface scratches out and then um, man it sure take a look at that and then we got the the finish buff is this which you know it looks like gives it that, that wet look I know the, the camera doesn't make it look right it looks kind of goldy looking but they're really red cherry red beautiful so there, there were some kind of heavy scratches here I got them out by buffing in a little bit of four aught steel wool, and there's kind of a kind of a rub mark here, probably from maybe the tom rubbing on the snare. I'm not sure. Well, it's slightly there, not much anymore. So that's where we are. Troy's going to start uh, assembling. Okay, uh, Troy's installing all the parts on these shells. How are they looking, Troy? Well, you know, uh, as far as I can tell. Um I think they're looking not, okay. Not as good as they did. <laughs> no, they're looking really nice. Show him that 12. Uh, the 12. Let's see here. 12's all together. In the meantime, I've uh, taken the liberty of taping the inlay on the bass drum hoops. And I'm going to take them outside and uh, give them a good sanding. 
because they're going to get primed and painted here shortly. There's the 12. It's all put back together, gleaming. Yeah, and what we find is things have wear patterns and whatnot. Looks like we played a little bit on the bottom head. Oops. That's a hell of a camera rig you got there, man. <laughs> uh, wow. Look at it. There you go. Total piece of shit. Now it's a uh, selfie stick. <laughs> Look at that. Um, we got the tone control back on. Yep. Got How the, does it sound? Let's hear it. I got yeah, it really beautiful. cranked up so it seats. Beautiful. Yep. Sounds like Joe Romorello. Who is jo Joel Romello? Joel Morello, yeah. Is that his middle initial? Mm hmm. It used to be. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to go out, outside and sand and we'll be back at it. Yeah, I've sanded these hoops down real good. Almost down to the wood, and this is the first coat of primer I put on them. And um, they're looking pretty good, so I'm going to hit them with a few coats of primer and then uh, sand them, do some feeling or filling, sorry. <laughs> And then uh, prime them again. Then we'll see where we're at, and then we'll give it the final coat or two or three. Well, it's the next day, and um, I'm looking at these hoops. I'm trying to get this shadow out of this. There we go. Okay, now this primer shows all the problems on these hoops. Actually, the front hoop looks pretty good, but this rear batter side... Now you can see all the spots that need filling. That's the beauty about uh, primer, that it basically tells you what's going on, what to fill. See, look at all the spots where the, I think that was a cowbell holder. Looks to me like that's the way that clamp does that. The outside is pretty good. There's a couple little dings here and there. I'm gonna hit those with spot putty. You get that stuff at uh, auto paint stores. I use it. It's called Spot Putty, and uh, the rest of it looks pretty good. So I'll go around this hoop and the other one and uh, show you how that looks. I've spot puttied all these problems on this hoop. And there's numerous problems. Um, and so I'm going to let this stuff dry. Then I'm going to sand it with probably 320. And I'm going to um, reprime these. And then uh, that'll tell the story once again. Are we trying to get these things perfect? Well, you can. But we're trying to get these presentable. And so I think they're going to be really nice. The other hoop. It was a resonant side hoop. Really wasn't bad at all. So I did put a few spots of putty on there, but they're not even worth showing. It's this batter side that really is rough. Okay, so I've sanded this thing, this uh, hoop, and uh, this is about how it should look. Uh, trying to hold this up. This is uh, real smooth in here. We're going to get this um, primed again. And then we'll see exactly what we need. This is where the bass drum pedal was <clears throat> really digging into the, to the hoop. And we've let the primer seal all of the outside. And I go over the outside edge just for the old piece of sand white paper and I make it round. And go to the, it's hard to hard to hold this and do what I'm trying to show you. Just hold the sandpaper round and contour the the edge and let the primer fill all the voids, and you'll get it perfect. When I'm doing my hoop, my hoops, uh, I always use a gloss black. Some people use a matte black, but that is not what Ludwig or Gretsch or any of the companies use. They did not use matte black. They use gloss. There wasn't even matte black around back then. It was either flat or gloss. 
So I use this Rust-Oleum, and you see it says paint and primer. Don't buy into that. It's not paint. and It may be primer, but that's not really going to take care of your voids and your finish. Use the good quality Rust-Oleum or a good quality paint and use some primer. And it says dry or wet sanding. Wet sanding is a good way to do it. But wet sanding won't take care of the uh, the heavier stuff. So always use a good primer first. Don't buy into this paint and primer. Okay, I think I've got these hoops where I like them. They, um, well, this is hard to film. <laughs> um, I think I've got them pretty much where I like them. They're really smooth. I've hit them with 320 and uh, filled all the uh, problem areas. Well, I shouldn't say all to where they're acceptable, very acceptable. I think Troy is going to like these hoops. Uh, of course, this uh, batter side was battered. But we've got it to real smooth now. And so we'll start stacking some coats of black on there. Gloss black. And we'll bring it back. I thought I'd give you a little uh, view of me spraying these hoops. Now these hoops have got a couple coats on them. And I, I let them dry about half hour to an hour between coats but I put on the coats very lightly especially the first coat you almost don't even want to cover the primer just a light tack coat so I'll go ahead and give these another coat Okay, so this is uh, Saturday, a week later, after doing some work on these drums. And Troy's here. <clears throat> He's brought, um, here's the hoops, how they turned out. Um, I guess they're, what do you think, Troy? Pretty good or what? Hey man, uh, I'm ready to give those things some more character. But uh, I get to start from scratch. But definitely needed it uh, overall. I think it really brings the, the whole vibe of the drum kit up. Yeah. So we took, uh, you know, a lot of the dings out of them and uh, got everything uh, pretty much flat. Um, you know, especially the edges where the claws dug in, they're really flat now. And so what, what I suggested to Troy is we're going to let these things cure for, you know, as long as he can stand waiting for them. Uh, to put them together because there's no hurry he's got other drums to play but now he can look at these and let them cure in the house and do some uh, some other things so they're all cleaned up and there's the 12 looking good and the cherished 14 by 14 he's going to buy some new heads for these and then I guess he picked up a jazz festival somewhere which is in uh, you know, matches up real nice with them. And uh, that's a better drum to have than the Pioneer, I would think. I'm going to get a Pioneer just because Bud loves them so much. Yeah. Well, no, I don't mind them. There's nothing wrong with those drums. A lot of guys get good sounds out of them. Uh, oh, and there's Troy's brother right there. Yeah. So 
don't mess with him. And don't call him deer either. No. No, just kidding. So, um, here's where we got problems. You want to lift this crap off of here? And I'll, I want to show, point, out, point out some things to... Uh, crap off of there, man. ...to people here. <laughs> I was going through the video. Hello, boy. Oh, so my Sorry, my wife walked in the room and she never stopped talking, so... Well, that might have been, um, <laughs> that might have been funny to leave it in. At least I, sh I should have, but... Anyway, that's not what we're here for. Okay, so <laughs> I was looking at the video from last week, and I think the drum was sitting here like this, and I could kind of see I'm going, what the heck is that bolt sticking out of here like this? And so I, I got a hold of Troy. I texted him. I said, hey. What's, what's going on here, man? I read him the riot act about that. He goes, oh, no, when we fixed that rail consulate, that was there like that. I said, are you sure you didn't flip that over? He goes, no, no. I said, well, I would have never left this this way. Anyway, Troy's going to loosen this thing up. We're going to put it up here, and we're going to take that carriage bolt out of there and either put a shorter one in. We're surely going to turn it around, so we'll be all right, kids, let me explain something here. Uh, the, some genius put this carriage bolt in this way. Hold this camera here, Troy. Let the uh, professor profess. So, so some genius put this carriage bolt in this way because you see this slot up and down here. He thought, well, that'll lock that in. Well, yeah, it'll lock it in. That's not how it goes. This is square here, and this is the wrong size carriage bolt, by the way. So there's something deeply wrong here. But anyway, this is slotted here, so this has room to move up and down, okay? So here we're going to find a different carriage bolt out of my many, and we're going to get this thing working right. All right, so we've got this, we've got a shorter carriage bolt uh, that's not, you know, hanging off. He had this other one that was about, you know, look at it. It's hanging off another, I don't know, half an inch or more. That just doesn't look good. And this looks a lot better. So when we put this thing on, you got to find that hole that's in the dial. One of these holes. And I was telling Troy that you know, I like to have mine tilted a little bit. He agreed. There's the mature way to That's have the mature way. Tom mounted. <laughs> so we're all playing jazz, and uh, we're all playing traditional. I said, uh, all, I uh, said, you know, just look at any pictures of Max, uh, Charlie Persip, uh, Elvin, you know, anybody, and all of their toms are tw tilted. Tony, uh, you know. And Alan Dawson, you know, all the greats, Louis Hayes, all the greats, their tom is tilted. So if you want to be a mature drummer, then you've, you've got to have it tilted. And you've got to start playing traditional grip, too. Forget this match grip crap. Right. Just kidding. No, I'm a match grip player from way back, but I've changed my grip. Uh, over the last few years, and now all I can do is play traditional grip because I like it that way and it just looks better when I see people playing now on videos and they're playing match grip it just doesn't look right to me okay not to you and these all came out okay so that's uh, that's the uh, finished product we've got here I just wanted to rave on about these uh, rail consulates and where the carriage bolts are see that's barely sticking out it's kind of nice there and if you take offense, put it in the comments. I, I'm always up for that. But don't just don't give me a, a, a thumbs down. Explain your thumbs down. All right. <laughs> okay, um, that's it for now. We're, I've got another video coming out uh, soon. I'm going to be uh, doing some more hoops for for a guy in Luxembourg. So you'll enjoy that soon. And until then. <laughs> See you guys.